Hello, fellow EMBA classmates of Finance 695. Uh, we have been given, it's a little opportunity to talk about investment strategy by EZA Cresson, or as I like to call him, Difficult B Cresson. Uh, either way, he has asked us to choose an investment strategy and analyze it using statistics to figure out if there is a correlation between our strategy and a higher return on our investment. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. The first thing I want to talk about is Warren Buffett. He is, however, doesn't really matter how you feel about him politically, you may agree with him, you may not, but luckily we're not in political science, we're in finance, and we definitely like him for financial reasons. He is the second wealthiest man in America, uh, second only to Bill Gates, and he's made some really good decisions as far as investing goes. So the first rule that he goes by is never lose money. The second rule that he goes by is never forget rule number one. So I think that makes perfect sense and seems like it's working for him. So we're going to listen to him a little bit. So the investment strategy that I came up with, or I guess it's probably something that would make sense to a lot of people, is to invest your money in companies with a higher return on equity in hopes that it's going to offer you a higher return on your investment. So we'll talk a little bit about return on equity, and the reason I brought up Warren Buffett is because this is his favorite profitability ratio, or his favorite way to look at a company. It's his favorite number, if you will. So the return on equity, as we all know at this point after our last finance class, is that it's a profitability ratio which equals the net income over the total equity. So basically, you'll see on the screen the return on equity, a quick little description is that it measures a corporation's profitability by revealing how much profit a company generates with the money that shareholders have invested in the company. So basically what I did for this was I chose the Dow 30 companies. I really like the idea of the Dow 30 because it gives us a great index to work with, which is why I think everybody uses it to figure out what's going on with the stock market. Um, there's, there's all these different types of companies. It's highly diversified. I mean, you have IBM, Boeing, AT&T, McDonald's, Disney, all kinds of different companies. So that when one is doing really well, you know, maybe another isn't. And then on the, up, on the flip side, when one isn't doing well, maybe another is. So it gives us a good mid-level idea of what's happening and we can use it as an index. So I chose the Dow 30 companies to look into to decide if my investment strategy is a good one or not. So what I did was I listed out all my Dow 30 companies and then I listed out their return on equity, which I pulled from Yahoo Finance. And then I also listed out the 52-week change in percentage return that each of the companies had. So I sorted the return on equity from highest to lowest. And you can see that when I sorted it, it also in turn sorted the return in percentage for each company as well. So then I ran a regression test. And as you can see, we'll look down here at the x variable 1, and the p-value of the x variable is 0 0.56. So in order for this to be where I would want it to be, this p-value would need to be less than 0 0.05. As you can see, it is not. It's a lot higher. So what does that tell us? Basically, the verdict here says that since the p-value of the x variable was greater than 0.05, the sample that I chose, which was the Dow 30 companies, is not statistically significantly different. So basically this is telling us that there's really not a statistical correlation between a higher return on equity and a higher return on your investment. So unfortunately this is not exactly what I would have thought. I kind of figured that the return on equity would yield a higher return because it, it's telling you that the company can use equity in a way to make money for the shareholders. But um, there's a few reasons why it might not work out that way. And as we talked about in, in class, it, one of them could be that my sample wasn't large enough or I chose a, a bad sample or I chose a bad test or for some reason maybe the return on equity being higher doesn't necessarily mean that the company is using the funds how they should. Like it could be, you know, when you go to do the DuPont analysis to break down the return on equity, it could be that maybe it's driven by something that isn't so good, like a higher equity multiplier. 
something like that, meaning that the company is more highly leveraged than it should be, or any of those things, you know, any of the above could be reasons why. So we're not going to fret too much over it, but, you know, it isn't exactly a, something that a statistician would be comfortable with using. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad strategy, but it doesn't prove that you're going to make more money if you invest in companies with a higher return on equity. So if you just happen to believe in this for some reason, if you're a really big fan like Warren Buffett of the return on equity, then you could do it. But there aren't any statistics that prove that this is a good you know, basis on which to invest your money. So there you have it a little bit. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about Warren Buffett, the return on equity, and whether or not you feel like this is something you would base your decision to invest in a company on. So thanks for your time.